Today we're going to talk about how to install the TMC2209 with sensorless homing and a controller fan on the FISEC Spider version 1.1. So I need to talk about a couple of things real quick so that you understand what's going on on the board. So the first thing is our steppers. We have our stepper ports for our X minimum, our Y minimum, our Z minimum, then our first extruder, second extruder, third extruder, fourth extruder, and fifth extruder. Now these can be used for other functionality like dual Z steppers, but for now we're not going to talk about that. With sensorless homing though, we have to know about these actual pins over here for our configuration. So we have our X minimum, our Y minimum, our Z minimum, our E0, E1, and E2. Now these also can be used for X maximum, Y maximum, or Z maximum, depending upon your configuration and changes that you do to the Marlin config. But that's not a subject of this tutorial at the moment. So the other thing we need to realize over here is that we have three fan ports that we can control. Now technically it's only two in the case of the cooling fans. So you can either use this one being fan one or fan two. This one is fan zero. Now what you need to also understand is that there's jumpers for the power levels. So you have five volts, then there's another set of jumper cap pins over here for 12 volts and then there's 24 volts right next to that and that repeats throughout this sequence of fans so what we're going to have to do first is understand how to install this so we're going to actually go over and see what it looks like on the FISEC github so over on the FISEC GitHub, you can see over here that we have the FISEC Spider. So the GitHub location is right here. So we'll click on that and it gives you all the information you need to know about your configuration down in here. But I've already opened up the actual pinout diagram, or in this case, it's not a pinout diagram, but a wiring diagram that they give a lot of detail on. So what we need to first do is look at the stepper over here. So up in the upper right hand corner, there says use FISEC TMC 2209 version 3.1. And we need to know where the enable pin is and also where the jumper is going to be for our configuration for the UART configuration of TMC 2209. So we know that our enable pin is going to be here and we're going to have to align these when we insert the actual stepper. The default configuration already has the jumper in place for the TMC2209. So we're good there. Let's go over and also look at where we have to place a jumper. And as you can see over here, they talk about it a little bit for sensorless homing, but we need to place a jumper right here. And then we're going to have to move a jumper over here for 12 volts. So I'll do that in just a second. We also have to remember that the polarity in this board may be static. So you're going to have to do voltage on one side and ground on the other. Because when I did it backwards, it did not work. So now that we have all that sorted out, we can go back over to the board and set that up. So... Back over on the workbench, you can see right here that I have the stepper sitting out. I'm going to zoom in on that. And as you can see, it's a TMC 2209 version 1.3 because it's particular to this board because they've changed the way they configure it. And our enable pin is right here. So we're all set with the actual setting for the X motor down here for our jumper. So we don't have to move that. So what I'm going to do is zoom out so you can see this better. And I'm going to pick up the stepper. And as you've noted, there's a color on one side and on the other. So I'm going to insert that in this port right here with a little bit of pressure. Now I'm going to run it presently without the cooling fins because I'm just running it for the actual tutorial. 
Now, what you also have to remember is that cooling fans should be used for that. That's why I'm showing you the controller fan. So let's move the jumper over here into the right position. So it's going to be right there for 12 volts. So you can see that I took it off the 5 volt cap and moved it to the 12 volt cap. Now, one of the things I've discovered is if I don't anchor this down just right, it may fail. So we'll find out if that's good. That feels like it's in place. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm also going to connect the actual DuPont connector. And that should be good as well, but it can get loose. The other thing I'm going to teach you about right now is ferrule connectors. I placed them on the configuration by design because it keeps wires from fraying and touching each other because you can damage your system if you don't have these. So these are very important. The other thing that I want to point out real quick is that I've labeled on top of my board red for where voltage is and unmarked for ground. So I've done that for the power supply, for the power supplies, for the heating bed, and also for the steppers. Now steppers technically, or I'm sorry, not steppers, actual uh, hot ends, pardon me. But the power for these does not change, meaning that voltage and ground don't matter in this case when you're using a hot end. When you're using other devices like a fan, it may matter. So let me connect this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the first one for voltage over in here. And then I'm going to tighten this down. And you'll see why it's important in a second. So that's nice and tight. So let's do the next one. So we're going to slide it in the next connector, hopefully. Now, if I get this wrong, I can always take it back out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the screw a little. There we go. And tighten that down. Now you see there's no exposed wires and everything's inside. So the next thing we want to do is actually load the firmware. So to do that, we've actually got to pop out the SD card and place it in our SD card reader. So I'm going to place it inside here, and then I'm going to place it in the computer, and you may hear a beep. And also, I have to point out that when using TMC2209 steppers, the power supply should be on PSU power, not on 5 volts, because it will cause issues when using it. So, now that we've got all that sorted out, let's go back over to the computer. And on the computer, I'm going to go over to VS Code, and I'm going to click on the Explorer, then Open Folder, then I'm going to go to my Downloads folder, my Marlin folder, my next Marlin folder, then Select Folder. Inside here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first note what my default environment is. This is the chipset that normally runs on the board. But this is for the Mega 2560 or the ramps configuration. So we're going to need to modify it. So in order to do that, this is how you can figure it out. You click on Marlin, then Source, then Core, then Boards.h. Inside here, we're going to search on the spider. And once we find the spider, we're going to highlight the configuration, copy it, and then we're going to note our chipset configuration over here, which is STM32F446. That's going to be important. So we'll minimize core and source. We'll go to configuration.h. And what we're going to do is search on motherboard. And we're going to highlight the ramps configuration and paste ours over it. Next thing we need to do is change the serial port to negative one. And then we have to search on our stepper, which is the A4988. And that'll bring us to where our steppers are. This is in the default configuration. Our stepper is actually the TMC2209, so we'll copy that and paste it here. Then down here for default access steps per unit, 
they have a default configuration that they use being 80, 80, 400, and 500. So for your X, Y, Z, and then any of your E steppers. Now the E steppers, if they're the same, you don't have to change this. But if they vary, then you're gonna have to follow this. So to configure it, we're gonna have to go over to the configuration advanced.h. I like to search on 800 and then hit enter a couple of times to get to X current for the stepper for TMC. Now, micro steps is kind of important in that if you want to increase the re resolution that you're working with down here from 80, which is 1 16th of a step, to 160, that means that you have to change the configuration over here to 32. If you don't change it, it'll be default. But if we go back over here and we want to increase this to 1 64th of a step, we're going to say it's 320. And then over here, we're going to change this to 64. And that goes all the way up to 1 256th of a step. I don't recommend going that high. 64 is probably where I would stop, but that's just so you understand how it works. So the next thing we need to do is actually turn on debug because we want to test what's going on with our configuration. So I'm going to search on TMC underscore debug and I'm going to remove the comment by doing a control slash and I'm going to find the next one. I'm also going to do this. This is for our G codes so that we can use the M122. Now that those are set, I'm going to go back to the top and I'm going to search on sensorless underscore home. And that'll bring us to sensorless homing. So I'll do the control forward slash again to remove the comment. And then I'm going to change the stall sensitivity because this is used for spy. So we're going to change it to 125, which is 125, which is optimal that I found. It may be different depending upon your configuration but that's what I start with in a default configuration. So now that that's set, there's a couple other things I wanna point out because I'm using 24 volts for my power supply. So if you wanna change that, I usually search on 12 volts and it might take a couple to find it, but there's a configuration that you may need to set if you're using spread cycle chopper so if you want to change this, you would go to the chopper over here and then change it down here to 24. That will allow you to use it if you decide to use this functionality. But I'm starting with the base configuration, so I'm showing you that. The other thing I want to point out over here is the invert of your actual axis. So sometimes it won't home in the direction you like. You can change it by changing the false to a true. So now that I have all of that covered, we're gonna do one last thing and that's our controller fan. So we want it to turn on when the stepper is active. So we're gonna search on controller underscore fan or just controller. Let's see if I can find it real quick here. There we go. So what we need to do to activate this is remove the comment with a control forward slash. Then down here, we're gonna have to remove the comment to activate this functionality, which is right here. And it's a negative one, meaning that it's not set. So we're gonna have to find the pin for that. So to do that, we're gonna have to go back over to the source config, then go to pins, then we'll go to our chipset, which is STM32F. And then in here, we'll find our board, which is the FISEC Spider. And as you can see, the FISEC Spider only has a couple of pins in it, but then refers to this for an include, which means this is where the remainder of pins are because they are basically combined when compile takes place. So we're gonna go to pins FISEC S6. So over here, we now have the remainder of our pins. So we'll scroll down and look for fans. So it should be kind of obvious when we get to it, 
which is right here. So our fan number, or pin number in this case, is gonna be PB1. So we're gonna copy that. Then we're gonna close out of here, go to the advanced configuration where it's negative one, and paste it. Next, what we wanna do is change our fan speed. I'm gonna change it to 200. Um, that's just my preference. If you change it too low, the fan will not turn. So 200 is a good starting point. And then there are other settings that you can use in here if you so choose. But I'm just gonna show you a couple of them. So I'm gonna change the 60 to a five for fan controller idle time. So essentially, if you disable your stepper, meaning motors off, after five seconds, your fan will be disabled. I'm just moving it down to five seconds because 60 seconds in a video is too high. So now that we've got that set, we've got to set up the actual compile. So I'm gonna scroll up. I'm going to minimize this category for pins and for source. And I'm gonna to go to the INI file because that is what's included down here. So I have to go to this folder, find our chipset, which is the STM32F. Then I have to search on FISEC. So as soon as I found that, there's a couple of different ones. The one we actually want is the FISEC underscore S6 underscore 8000. So we'll copy that. Then we'll minimize the INI, go back over to platform platform.io.ini, highlight the Mega 2560 for the chipset, and put in our default environment for our chipset. Next thing we need to do is go to platform IO. And you can see there's a build that took place for the Mega 2560. That's what they do to confirm that it's stable before releasing. So we're gonna clean that out. So now you can see that it's gone. Now we can hit the checkbox over here and it will do the build, which is a series of compiles. Now understand if it does fail the first time, hit the checkbox again down here and rebuild to see if it's successful because sometimes things build out of order. If it does fail with something that's red inside of here, then what you're gonna have to do is find the first time it fails and correct the issue. Every error after that may be a cascade of issues that occur because of the first. So the yellow that you just saw is actually a warning, that's okay. So now that this is almost done compiling, we can go over to the .pio folder, the build folder, the FISEC folder, and find firmware.bin. So we can right click on this and say reveal in file explorer. So inside file explorer, we can check first of all on our previous build, which is old.bin. This is actually firmware.bin. The reason they rename it to old.bin is so it doesn't reload every time you power up. So if you wanted to copy this or reinstall it, you'd rename it to firmware.bin in lowercase. So let's go back and copy over the new configuration by saying send to, and we'll send it to our boot drive. So you can confirm it's there. Now we'll go back over to the desktop. Okay, I'm gonna pop out the drive. I'm then going to place it inside the drive over here. Now there's one last detail that I have to do and that's the jumper for sensorless homing. So I'm gonna put that in place. And now I'm gonna go over to Pronterface and we're gonna take a look at that. So inside Pronterface, it says COM port one. Now, before we actually can do this, we have to energize the system. So that means powering it up. So I'm gonna grab the power cord. I'm going to then place it inside. Now you should not touch the board at this point. You may hear a beep in a second when the firmware loads. And what we're gonna to have to do is figure out what to connect to. So I'm going to check in device manager by typing device manager and pressing enter. When it comes up, we'll check to see what the COM port is. It says six. So we'll go over here and we'll see if it's here. If it isn't, you can always change this by backspace and putting in six. So I'm gonna connect 
it says the printer is now online. So I'm going to check the stepper status by doing a G code M122, enter. It says it's okay, so we're good there. So what we're going to do next is we're actually going to move the actual stepper and watch the fan. So I'm going to move 10 millimeters. So I'll click over here. As you can see, the fan went on. So we're good there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to home the access. So I'm going to click on this little home icon here and we'll see if it works. And it did sensor this homing fine. Now we'll move it to the center again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on motors off. And in five seconds, the motor should stop for the fan. So that worked as well. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe. And for my subscribers and Patreons on PayPal, I'm placing a thank you note at the very end of the tutorial because you helped make this possible. And everyone be safe, have a nice day, and I'll talk to you later.